Hi YouTubers, Milo here, the indolent polymath. I recently took author Pat Ware's book, The Cold War Operations Manual, off my bookshelf for this overhead book review. As I flipped through the pages, covering the years from 1946 to 1991, I was reminded of a trip I took a few years ago to the National Air and Space Museum Annex in Chantilly, Virginia. That's where I took the footage you're watching now. Nestled among 100 plus years of aviation history is this shiny silver giant, a herald that flew out of a Pandora's box of our own twisted design. As I pan my camera over the B-25's fuselage, I couldn't help but think of the dark history of the Cold War that penetrated our lives for 45 years. It's a legacy that's still with us to this day, and we seem to have collectively forgotten it. I think that's why the Enola Gay is on full display in Virginia. It's a reminder of the dangerous past and a warning for the present. While I wish we could rewrite this portion of history and leave out the invention of nuclear weapons, I am aware that the plane, the crew, and the atomic bomb mission may have saved my grandfather's life. In August of 1945, as the bombs were being prepared to be dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, my grandfather, a Marine, was preparing to ship out for the invasion of Japan. That sea voyage and invasion were canceled because of the Enola Gay's mission. And at the incalculable expense of two Japanese cities and their people, just maybe I was able to know my grandfather because of it. The world became a very dangerous place after those missions and affected everyone on Earth. We entered a world of nuclear weapons, and that's the world we still live in today. I'm a second generation child of the atom. My baby boomer parents had duck and cover drills in school in the 1950s and lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. As a child of the 1970s and 80s, I witnessed marches for peace by the worldwide anti-nuclear movement. Cars had no nukes bumper stickers, and many buildings were decorated with the yellow and black fallout shelter sign. And there's still some of these up to this day if you look carefully at buildings in your area. We watched films like On the Beach, Failsafe, Dr. Strangelove, The Day After, The Last Testament, and Threads cinematic touchstones of that era, reflecting the real fear humming in the background of our busy lives. For the entire world, the great nuclear showdown between the U.S. and USSR was always looming. Pat Ware's book is an excellent, broad overview of the decades after Fat Man and Little Boy were dropped on Japan. The book is hardcover and roughly 8.5 by 11 inches. Written 2016, it's 156 pages long and filled with color and black and white photos, as well as detailed color charts. Sections include the Cold War story, nuclear weapons, early warning systems, air launch nuclear weapons, land-based nuclear weapons, naval nuclear weapons, emergency government facilities, and civil defense. It's a global history of the Cold War. However, being a Haynes manual is also very UK focused. This is refreshing as an American reader. As Americans, we seem to always be gazing inward or viewing the world through the narrow prism of 20th century foreign policy. We can, it seems, be oblivious to the consequences of our actions. And it's easy to forget that our role in the Cold War affected the whole world, not just the U.S. and Soviet Union. The U.K. in particular became home to multiple U.S. Air Force bases, and nuclear weapons stockpiles ready for delivery if needed. The epilogue section of the book is particularly good as well as sobering. Pat Ware writes, quote, for 70 years, the world has teetered on the nuclear precipice, sometimes coming close to catastrophe, at other times taking a step or two back. Nevertheless, nuclear weapons remain a part of life. Ironically, many believe that a third world war will be the result of nuclear accident or misunderstanding." End quote. There are many, many excellent books on the Cold War, but I like this one because it's European-focused and broad in scope. I hope you get a chance to spend some time with it. In addition to where you can find the book, I've included some great links in the details section below for your investigation. Among them, a U.S. government report on accidents involving nuclear weapons, or broken arrows as they're called, a link to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists and their Doomsday Clock. They believe that we're 100 seconds to midnight, by the way, the closest to Doomsday we've ever been since they started the clock in 1947. There are also links to the organization's Global Zero and the William J. Perry Project. Please check them out and consider supporting them in their efforts to do away with nukes. One final link is to the PBS American Experience film Command and Control, which talks about a Titan II missile accident that took place in Arkansas in 1980. 
Please watch this excellent film. It really illustrates the dangerous world we live in and how many close calls we've had. Thanks for watching, fellow polymaths. Hope this review doesn't keep you up tonight. See you next time, and please consider subscribing to our channel at Indolent Polymath.